Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we'll be taking a look at something that I've gotten a lot of requests for, and that is some advanced sky replacement with DaVinci Resolve 15 and Fusion. Now this is not that hard of a thing to do, but since we're in the beta, I've been getting lots and lots of crashes, so we'll just cross our fingers and hope that this tutorial goes well. All right, so the first thing that we need to know is the way that DaVinci handles color grading clips and doing visual effects on clips. So right now, the way that it currently stands, I haven't been able to get a second video source into a fusion composition without merging the two into a fusion clip. But when you do that, then both clips get affected by the color grade the same way. So you can get around that by grading first and then merging them into a fusion clip. So you can see I've already taken care of this with this clip. I've done a quick little primary grid on here just to sort of even it out and make it, make it workable. And then whenever we combine the two together, we'll, we can go ahead and grade the whole thing from there. So in order to get these two to play nicely together, we need to just go ahead and let me delete this because we don't need it. We need to just go ahead and merge these two together by selecting the both, right clicking and go to new fusion clip and boop, there we go. Now the two have become one. Excellent. Now in fusion, be sure to save all the time because this is going to crash. I can feel it. It's not a matter of if it is when. All right. So now we've got our two media sources. This one is our clip of Evelyn. So I'm going to name this. Um, Evelyn, and this is a picture of space stuff. I just took one of the public domain NASA images and then I combined it with just some sky texture so it looks a little more like it's coming through the atmosphere. So pretty easy to do. All right, so now the first thing we're going to do is just so that we have it ready to go is we're going to do all of our 3D stuff down here. So to get this set up, we're going to first add an image plane. And that will put our 2D image in 3D space. And then we need a merge 3D. This is where all of our 3D action gets merged together into one scene. And then after that, we need a 3D renderer. And that is most of our 3D scene ready to go. So we are prepared for whenever we are ready to use that. So next thing we're going to do is get our Luma key done. So the first thing I'm going to do is just a little preparation here and add another quick merge node right here, just because I know how this is going to look later on. And this is like, I'm using this as a little null object for now. So don't worry too much about that. Now we'll add our Luma key. And what this will do is we'll let us key out the sky so we can put our space picture or clouds, or whatever you want to put behind there, behind there. You can put text behind there, putting text in there is cool. I like that effect. I think that's neat. We can make lots of cool rock climbing videos. All right, so we've got this. And now you can see we're keying out mainly the darker parts right now, which is not what we want. We want to key out the brighter parts. So you just hit invert down there. Now you can ramp our lows up. You can see in our right hand viewer here, we're getting look pretty good. And you know, it looks pretty good. This is totally fine to leave a little bit of the sky coming through because that'll help with our composite later. And the next thing that we're going to do is merge our 3D scene with our 2D scenes. And we're going to do that in a little bit different way since we're doing a sky replacement. So we're not just going to take our rendered output and merge it in right away. We're going to actually add the rendered output back to our original image sort of to help it blend in. So I'll show you what I mean by that. We are going to, we're going to add another merge node and we're going to make sure that our rendered output is in the foreground of this one. And then we're going to take our output from our other merge node that we're just using as a null object and is not doing anything. We're going to make this the background. And now if we view this in one, you can see that these two are merged together. So right now this isn't the right size, but we'll take care of that whenever we start doing our 3D stuff. But doing this, we can then sort of fade back the opacity of this guy so that we can add it back over top of the original stuff, which will help blend it in a little bit better. It'll be a nice little control to have. So now we're going to get on to the exciting part and where things are most likely to crash. And that is the camera track. So shift space, camera, tracker, pop that right in there. And before we track, you see that since Evelyn is moving in the foreground and is not part of the 3D scene, we need to mask her out. So we do that just by going to shift space and REC. Let's drop a little rectangle in here because that's nice and simple. And when I use splines, it crashes. It's a common theme here. So I'll pop that into the track mask. Invert this. Bring this up in viewer one. And... We'll just move this over so it masks out Evelyn pretty nice and easy. 
bring our width down and our height up. That's pretty good. We probably don't need it to be that tight. So we'll say that that's looking pretty good. Add a little keyframe in the center position. And then we'll scroll back to the beginning and make sure that it still looks good there. And then we'll scroll forward. Let's we'll go all the way to the end and move it around a little bit. And then we'll go in the middle, make sure that everything stays kosher. And that is all looking good enough, good enough to me. So save again. Now we'll go to our camera tracker, bring that up in our left hand viewer and save again, cross our fingers and auto track. All right, you can see that our little tracking markers are not being put on Evelyn because we masked her out before, which is great, super handy dandy. And go back and look at that. That's pretty nice. Save again. And we'll hop forward to this little tab and click on solve. And that'll create our 3D camera for us. Excellent. So now in our scene output, we are ready to add a camera in there. So camera, 3D, drop that in. I'm just right clicking on here and dragging to get these options where I can get scene input. So scene output, scene input. And then just drop this into our merge 3D and save. I bring up our Merge 3D and you can see we've got a camera in here. Excellent. So I'm middle clicking to pan around, alt middle clicking to orbit around, and control scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So that's your basic controls there. So now we're ready to go ahead and move our little picture way back in 3D space. So we'll make sure we have that selected, the image plane, and click and drag our Z axis. I'm going to put it pretty far away because this is in space after all. So way back, and then we're going to want to scale it up. So in our transform tools, scale it up to something like 80 or more. We'll go ahead and merge these two things together just so we can see what we're doing. Excellent. And right now, our 3D thing is on the foreground. We actually want that to be in the background. So we'll take our Luma key output and put this on the foreground because we want Evelyn to be over top of the sky. And then we'll put our space thing on the background and that's looking good you see it doesn't look great right now because we haven't done any compositing but you know all in due time my friend so make this like 120 or more gotta scale it up pretty big because once again it is in space all right bring this up there we go nice now i've got a sick looking planet I'm not a huge fan of that sun right there. I wish that wasn't there, but, you know, we've gone this far without crashing. So you can art direct your own thing so it looks less bad. Just hide it a little bit. All right, save. And if we try and play this through, let me just view, just turn off our view over there. Nope, crashed. Great. All right, well, after that lovely crash, I guess this is an important part to show, and that is how to use a backup project. So I've got my little manager open. I just have list view because, you know, why not? And this was, the project was resolve broke again, so I had to make another gosh darn project five. Right click on this, project backups. And this is the most recent backup. I'm gonna go one before that, just, you know, to be safe, load. And we'll make this eight and see if we can load this guy up and there we go because oh i guess you didn't see every time i opened up the project resolve would just immediately crash again all right so after several more crashes we are back to where we were and i mean really only the other thing we have left to do in fusion is make our space stuff look less bad so we can just do that by selecting this node control space and then curves color curves and also hue curves. We're just going to reduce the saturation of the blues by a good little bit. That's a little too much. We will maybe add a little bit of red to this. Add some yellow to this. And we also need to blur it a bit. So over one more and control space. But we'll just do a normal blur because I don't want to tax anything too hard. So save again, actually save as a version, 
just so I don't have to go through the backup process. All right, and then blur size. We'll just bring this up or down to 0 0.2, 0 0.4. Yeah, and we'll call that good. We'll probably even want to lower this guy down a little bit. So Y offset, bring it down just so it's peeking up over the top. Yeah, and there's still too much blue in there. But I think making this look good is for a time whenever fusion works. And then the last sort of thing is, let's go back to our color page, and now we have this whole clip comped together. And, you know, we'll probably just be lazy and throw one of these guys on here. But I don't think this is a let type of thing. So, Alt S, we'll just add a little bit of contrast. We will reduce our... Oh, I do want to go back. Darken up this guy just a little bit. And I'll do that with... Do we have levels? We don't have levels. Let's see what color controls we do have. Tools, color, brightness and contrast would probably work. Color corrector would probably work. Yeah, it would just be boring and do brightness and contrast. It's been a while since I've used one of those. And we'll just increase the contrast a bit. And decrease the brightness. Not that much. Goodness gracious, there's way too much blue in there. We'll just change our hues around. That's green, and now it should be getting less blue. Probably need to flip this 180 degrees, which sucks. Can I delete some of these points? I surely can. We'll go back to our saturation curves. Let's take all that gosh darn blue out as much as possible but not that much let's try you always get into this you always get into these things you say it's it's good enough and then it's not I really just want I really just want a hue control buddy add to color color corrector this should hopefully be good enough yeah it's got a hue control and saturation, and lift, and brightness, and more blur, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. And yeah, we'll call that good enough for now until we go back into our color page to make it slightly less bad. So we've got a little too much contrast going on here. That's looking nice and quick little vignette around stuff. And her skin looks too dim, which is pretty nice and rhymy. So let's create a little parallel node. Actually, we'll do that in an outside node, Alt-O. And increase this gain, gamma a bit. Yeah, now she at least feels like she's semi at the right level. I do really feel like just screwing up these colors a bunch. I know what we can do. Add more glows. So we're going to use the lens reflections there we go and that looks like a sci-fi movie that's way too much preset is it summer that i like yeah these are all too much streaks is your typical sci-fi global colorize down global brightness way down but we'll pretend like that's good this is definitely not going to have a full screen playback thing because i'm 100 percent sure resolve will crash but you know hopefully you now have an idea of how to do Advanced Sky Replacement is pretty easy. It is camera tracker and luma keyer basically is all you need. Get better art direction, spend more time preparing your tutorial. But, you know, when you're doing one a day, you get some liberties. So anyway, alas, again, we come to the end of another exciting tutorial. You know the drill. Like the video if you liked it. Leave a comment telling me what I did wrong or what I did right. Or just complaining about how much Fusion's crashing. We can't get mad. I know software is hard. I, I feel you guys, developers. I feel you. I'm not complaining. I appreciate that you, that you do the work you do. You are heroes and unappreciated. So, you know, whatever. Uh, project backup. That was a nice little bonus that you got in this tutorial. How to access those. I know it's not always the most intuitive thing. Um, obligatory ad. Go to meesnewmedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of good stuff here. And when you're over there, you can type in the promo code RESOLVE15 for 15% off your entire order during this run of 15 straight days of DaVinci Resolve 15 tutorials. Speaking of which, subscribe to the Media YouTube channel. Make me feel good. The higher the numbers are, the better I feel. 
I'm just shallow like that. Once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. We have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.